Thanks. Um, well, I hire about 150 physicians and advanced practice clinicians every year. I don't personally. Fortunately, my staff does a lot of that. And I would say in the past five to seven years, we've really shifted our process in terms of what we're looking for. And so when I think about practice ready, it used to be that we were really focusing only on what I would call the more technical medical components of it. Although I will say I hear every day, if residents still went and had as many hours as they did when I went to training, they would be much better. And that may still be true. Um, but the reality is, is that that's not what's there. And I totally agree with the comment about um, particularly for nurse practitioners coming in, not necessarily having some programs are much better than others. And we do know that nationally there's been a 500% increase in the number of schools um, for NPs and PAs around the country. So it does mean that we have to look really carefully at where are we getting people from, what programs are really good, and we have some of those people in this room, so I am very grateful for that. Part of what we also do in our interviewing process, though, is we ask people a lot of questions that I don't think we used to ask them about. And so one of the things that we do is we use behavioral-based interviews. Um, we are asking people to tell us and give us very specific examples of what they've actually done. So don't tell me what it is you think you'd do in the circumstance. Tell me what you've actually done. So give me examples specifically of how you've built relationships with patients, how you've handled a situation with a patient that may not have gone well, how you've built relationships with other colleagues, how you may have done that in a difficult situation. So that whole relationship component is a piece that we put a lot of time and energy into asking people. It doesn't mean that coming in people have to be perfect. I don't think we're looking for that in any way, shape, or form. But what we are looking for is, do they even think about the relationship component and what have they done or what have they tried? And many times what we'll get back as I tried this, this didn't work very well. So therefore I sought out, you know, a colleague or someone who could give me some other ideas. So that's often a piece we're looking for. The teamwork and collaboration piece has multiplied exponentially from where we were. And so we do have a number of questions that we ask about give an example of when you had to work in a collaborative environment or create something that was collaborative with multiple people, perhaps from different specialties, um, from different training backgrounds. Um, and we find that getting pe even asking people these questions, I think, helps them to understand that the environment you're coming into is going to have these components there. Um, and we'll often have people then say to us, well, tell me what this means in your environment. So they're very interested in that. Another piece is time management, and I know that sounds like it's kind of old hat, but the reality is, is that to be a physician or a clinician in this day and age means you have to be really, really good at juggling an awful lot of balls. And so we are very careful about asking about, you know, have you, give us an example of a time you overcommitted yourself. What did you do? How did you handle it? You've got a, a clinic where you've got 23 people that day, you weren't expecting it. How are you, how have you managed that in the past? So we're really looking for some of those kinds of things. And again, it sends that message. One other piece that I think is different is people work now in very large systems. Working in a large system is different than working in a small office with just a couple of people. And so there are times in large systems where the system may make a decision that may not fit with what you believe or value. So we have questions around that. Give us examples of when a decision was made in a system you were in that you didn't agree with. What did you do? Again, we're not looking for people to be perfect, but we're looking for if they really felt strongly that it was different, what actions did they take? Or did they sometimes understand that sometimes in the system, that's the way it has to go? And then finally, we are beginning to ask more questions about the issue of resiliency and burnout. And I do not mean to imply in any way, shape, or form that this belongs solely on the shoulders of that clinician. In fact, I think it's a tragedy if we do that. But on the other hand, I also think that as a provider, a clinician, you also need to be thinking about and be able to tell us about when have you gotten depleted? What did you do? What did you think about? And so we also want that to be a key piece that we're asking people as they become part of our organization or thinking about our organization. So those are, so we have a whole series of questions that we use that were never there 10 years ago. Again, we try to be very behaviorally based, ask for examples of what people have done. And so we've been shifting our process from the recruitment perspective to have, I think, more emotional intelligence components in it in addition to the technical, but also some of these other components. So I'm going to stop there in the interest of time.